Hello there, my precious little eggy. So you're getting into instant photography and you have a lot of questions. Cameras, films, there's a whole bunch of stuff and it can be really overwhelming. People tend to get really wrapped up in which camera they should buy. The Polaroid Now or the One Step Plus. The Instax Wide or the Instax Square. The cameras have different bells and whistles. They have different features, but I mean, they're basically just holes. <laughs> they're boxes with holes. To me, it's the film that matters more than anything. The size of the frame, the colors you're gonna get, the cost, and perhaps most importantly, the reliability. On the menu today, we tested out a bunch of different films. Instax Mini, Instax Square, Instax Wide, Polaroid 600, Polaroid I-Type, Polaroid Go, Polaroid SX70, and just for fun, the now discontinued Polaroid Spectra. There's nothing fun about it being discontinued, but I had a pack of film laying around, so here we are. And for your reference, here is a quick montage of all the sizes of the different frames. Feel free to pause the video and get a closer look. Now for your ocular pleasure, I will put all of the prices of these films on screen. So you can pause and see those prices for yourself right now. These prices are of course, as of June, it's June, June 2021. I'm a mess. Links as always will be in the description below, but they are not sponsored. I am not affiliated. Uh, I kind of wish I was because when I go back and think about how much money I've spent on instant foam for this channel, I just kind of feel... <sighs> Hey listen, those prices are really important and I want you to keep them in the back of your mind because they're gonna play an important role later on in the video. We're gonna get to analyzing the photos in just a minute, but I wanna make sure that we are clear on the rules of engagement. I mean, come on, you guys know how I am with reviews. He's a good man and thorough. Exactly. My goal was to find a scene and take the same photo on all the different instant films. Now granted the different cameras have different lenses so the compositions might vary a little bit. It's not 100% scientific but I wanted to make them as close as humanly possible. I tried to keep all the cameras on auto when applicable just keeping new instant photographers in mind someone who's just gonna take it right out of the box and start shooting and not really mess around with it too much. With all that out of the way let's load up and take some photos. After we loaded up all the cameras, I noticed that there was a stack of red and yellow chairs right nearby. So that was the first photo. I thought it would be a great idea to see the range of colors that you can get with all the films. The Instax film is consistent throughout. They are on the whole sharper than the Polaroids. They are definitely cooler in terms of temperature than the Polaroids and they all perform consistently regardless of the size of the film. This is to be expected though. In terms of color temperature, in my experience, the Fuji Instax tends to be a little bit on the cooler side while Polaroid tends to be a little bit on the warmer, more quote unquote vintage side of things, which is kind of ironic considering Polar is in the name Polaroid. You'd think that would be the cool one. Hmm. For the Polaroid film, the 600 and the I-Type films are both pretty similar. The 600 seems to be slightly warmer than the I-Type film. The Polaroid Go film is definitely warm and almost shifting a little bit magenta. I'm not in love with that and it is definitely the softest of all the Polaroid photos. Just a quick note here, we're going to talk about development issues in the conclusion of the video. The SX70 shots are a little bit cooler than the I-Type and the 600 but relatively similar and the Spectra is very warm and very overexposed but honestly I was expecting that because it hasn't been stored very well and it is over a year expired now. You'll notice that I have a lunchbox here. Let me tell you, it wasn't for my lunch. After taking each shot, I would put the photo into the lunchbox to protect it from the sun and from the heat. As Polaroids do not do well in either of those. Fuji Instax doesn't matter. You can develop those right in the sun, right in the heat. They seemingly don't change. It's when they're placed inside an active toaster that they seem to be affected. Shout out to my Discord for making me do this. Our next scene was a street piano and it was painted blue as part of an art installation in Stanford. I like this one because there is deep blues, there is yellows in the frame, and the stuff in the background I thought it'd be a great range of colors, namely the primary colors. Ooh, we're going back to kindergarten, folks. The results here are about the same as the last one. The Instax photos all perform pretty similarly. They're a little bit on the cooler side. They're a little bit sharper than the Polaroids. 
Polaroid Go continues to be the least sharp of the bunch. Not the sharpest tool in the shed, as the great Smash Mouth once said. <laughs> I'm also not in love with the way the Polaroid Go metered this one. The background is just a little bit too hot. I don't love how we're losing the colors of the bricks behind and the grays of the sidewalk are just a little too bright for me. The Polaroid I-Type is slightly overexposed as well, but it has more of an airy feel as opposed to the Polaroid Go, although the whole image is shifting slightly magenta and a little bit too warm. Again, I think due to the temperature outside causing it to not develop properly. The Polaroid 600 film, this was the first oopsie of the video. I accidentally let the flash fire, so so this is inconsistent from the other ones, but I do think that the flesh gave some better colors. However, it has that really nasty reflection in the paint job of the piano. I can only assume here that we're using a smaller aperture because we use the flash on the Polaroid and that's why we're getting the background to be not so overexposed. You can see the comparison side by side here. Personally, I like the darker background a lot more than the airy overexposed one. But hey, that's my opinion. It doesn't account for your taste. Maybe you like the airier overexposed one. That's why I'm making this video. The SX-70 is a little bit cooler, and uh, I really nailed the focus there. Good job, Lou. Excellent work. I'm not exactly used to shooting on the SX-70, considering I've only shot one pack of film through there before. The background is a little bit bright, but it definitely developed better than the 600 and the I-Type film. Keep in mind, unlike the Polaroid now, the SX-70 actually does have an exposure compensation dial, so you can play around with that to darken out frames like this. I left it right in the middle for the purpose of this test. Last but not least, the Spectra is a disaster but we should expect that for the rest of the video because I just didn't store the film very well. It is expired and uh, it's very sad. That flashed. Perfect. We're doing great, Lou. Up next, portraits with a flash. My friend Corey made his modeling debut. It was absolutely wonderful. The Instax Square was definitely a little bit overexposed and frankly a little bit ugly, but the Instax Mini and the Instax Wide, very nice. The Instax Wide especially, I really love the look of this one. Again, definitely cooler, definitely sharper. These are consistent throughout. Except for the Square, a little disappointed in the Square. The Polaroid Go is very magenta and just... This is not good. I don't... I don't love this one bit. The Polaroid I-Type and 600 films were both very overexposed with the flash in this scenario. I think the wall was causing the flash to bounce back a little bit into the lens, which kind of didn't help the cause, but just very bright, very overexposed, not too into the look of either of these photos. You can also tell that I needed to clean the rollers on my Polaroid now. I did hit them with a microfiber cloth at the beginning of the day, but I didn't have any kind of like water and paper towels to do it more thoroughly. So you could see a little bit of those marks on the frame, which is very unfortunate. We did didn't have a flash bar for the SX-70, so that will not be consistent with the others, but overall, I kind of missed the focus. Wow, shocker. Good job, Lou. I definitely prefer this look to the I-Type and the 600, though. And, of course, we have the Spectra, which we hopped over to Chernobyl and took the photo there because this exposure is undoubtedly nuclear. For this next photo, I shot through some trees towards the street and kind of tried to keep the American flag in the center of the frame. Didn't do a perfect job of that, but the point of this one was to get some of those colors, but more importantly, to test the dynamic range. The trees were in shadows, the street was really bright. I wanted to see how the cameras would gauge that. I was really surprised to see the Instax Mini seem to handle it the best. I dig the exposure on this one. Yeah, the shadows are pretty dark, but the street isn't glowing with nuclear overexposure so that's a good thing in my book the square is okay the wide is pretty good as well the Polaroids all seem to overexpose the street with the 600 being the standout because it's exposed a little bit brighter than the others and it's way warmer Polaroid go still the least sharp still kind of the ugliest in my opinion I think we're finding a bit of a trend here and last but not least the spectra um Wow, wow. that is wow. wow up next a beautiful relic from the past. That's right, for some reason in Stanford, Connecticut, there is a blockbuster sign. There is no blockbuster video, there is just the sign. So I've always meant to take a picture of it. Let's take eight. The Instax Mini didn't do the best job here. It's not a horrible offender, but nothing to write home about. The Instax Square and the Instax Wide, they really did a fantastic job though. I love the way these photos look. They're very dramatic, the clouds behind the sign. It's a reminder of the hole in the Earth's heart ever since Blockbuster went away. The Polaroid Go, I-Type, and 600 films were all magenta shifted 
kind of overexposed, kind of warm, kind of not so hot. This isn't a great uh, PR video for Polaroid, unfortunately. The SX70 looks better and the Spectra not so great, again, to be expected. Up next, I took photos of my friend Jacob standing in front of this building. I thought the perspective was kind of cool. In retrospect, though, I wish I would have had Jacob much closer to the frame because that would have been a more traditional portrait as opposed to him being so small in the frame, but still works. My observations so far have remained consistent with these photos. The Fujis are sharper, they're cooler, the Polaroids are a little bit brighter, they're a little bit warmer, the Go is, is still in last place in my opinion, and the Spectra is just all messed up. After the photo of Jacob in the building, I turned and took a picture of all the boats by the docks nearby. I thought this would be a good test because there's a ton of detail here, there's a lot of different textures, and while there might not be a huge range of colors, there's just a lot going on in the frame. You might notice a crucial mistake here, I don't know how exactly, but I forgot to take an SX-70 of the scene, so this is where the SX-70 shot would have gone if I had one. The Fujis really stayed on course, but the Polaroids behaved a little bit differently in this one. The I-Type was still pretty hot, still pretty warm, but the 600 was a little bit better in terms of exposure, still a little bit magenta shifted. The Polaroid Go was a little bit underexposed and a little bit magenta, and the Spectra, not, not so hot. Last and probably least in this context, I went for another shot of the docks because I was really into the way the clouds were reflected on the water and frankly, I don't really like how any of these turned out. The exposures are all over the place, I personally didn't do a great job of composing them, they're kinda crooked, uh, excellent work as always, but hey, there they are. Before I wrap things up here and give you my opinions, I realized in true Lou fashion, I completely forgot to test something really important. I've been shooting on both Polaroid and Instax film for quite a while now, even before this channel started. And one thing I've noticed is that the Instax film really struggles with hot spots, right? Areas of very high exposure, namely the sun, reflections of the sun, anything that's a really, really bright highlight, even the flash can cause this. Whenever these extremely bright highlights are present in the frame, the Instax film will render those highlights as just a black dot. So the sun will just be a little black dot. Any of those reflections, little black dots. I guess it could be a cool look in certain scenarios, but don't tell anybody. I don't think that's how it's supposed to work. I did a quick test of this in my bathroom to see if the issue was still a thing. I shot the flash directly into the mirror and sure enough, there it is. Fuji's solution, uh, don't do that. So... <laughs> and to be thoroughly clear here, this is not an issue that Polaroid suffers from. Hey, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. The Polaroids here disappointed me more than the Dark Lord fight in The Ancient Gods Part 2, but let's face it, nothing in this hellscape we call home is perfect. Except Breaking Bad. I mean, this is really important to me. Jesus, just you make me beg it? Come on, just stick it in there. Breaking Bad is perfect. Here's the deal, I'm from the Northeast. It does get pretty hot over here in the summer and very humid, but this wasn't even particularly a bad day. It was like, I don't know, 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what the hell that is in Celsius. Sorry, rest of the world. The point is, it wasn't that hot out. Like I was, I was sweating, but like it wasn't ball soup. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, there's a reason I bring that up. Over the last year, I've been saying that Polaroid has been more reliable. I've been saying that if you order straight through them and you store it in the fridge and you follow all the best practices, things work out. And I will say I have had very positive experiences up until making this video, of course. That, that is how it would go. So thanks a lot, Polaroid. Everybody at school thinks I'm a freaking idiot because of you. In my mind, there's one of two explanations for what happened with the Polaroids. One, I ordered directly from Polaroid I'd stored it in the fridge and just got a bad batch, or two, it was too hot and they just didn't develop properly. It is possible that I was experiencing a combination of those two things as well. But I'm inclined to believe that it was a bad batch. I had three remaining shots in a pack of round frames in my Polaroid now that I fired off before we started filming this video, and those developed fine. Allow me to put this out there. I have been making videos for this channel for like three years now. I've been talking about instant photography, specifically Polaroids, for quite a long time now. And for me, it's starting to get to the point where I am tired of repeating myself. The reliability 
is the most important thing. And I really thought that Polaroid had turned the corner. It is possible that this is just a fluke. I've had a lot more positive than negative experiences with Polaroid in the last year. There was a part of me that wanted to not release this and redo the video and give Polaroid another chance, but honestly, I've been giving them chances for the last three years. And frankly, if the development issues were indeed caused by the weather, I mean, Fuji figured it out, so... Not sure what the problem is. Just saying, if you had a digital camera that you had to store in the fridge and you couldn't use in July and August because it was too hot outside, I don't think anyone would give that a pass. Maybe that's an unfair comparison. But if Portra 400 didn't work in the summer, I don't think people would love Portra 400 so much. I really do like Polaroid. I really love the aesthetics of their cameras, and when the film works, it's my favorite instant photography. But experiences like this really leave a sour taste in my mouth and really make me feel like Fuji's the way to go. The dilemma for me is I just like the Polaroid cameras better. I feel like the cameras themselves are better and more fun to use and look better than the Fuji's, but the Fuji film is just, in my experience, more reliable. Ultimately, with Polaroid, you're paying more money for less exposures that are less reliable. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video, really appreciate it. This is a, a really dense, thorough one, so if you got to this point in the video, you're, you're an all-star. You're an, you're an egg star. <laughs> thank you, appreciate it. A major special thank you has to go out to a few people. Corey, who filmed this video, thank you so much. He is on YouTube as well, and just put out a short film called Seasick. Go check that out, linked in the description below. Check out Jacob, he's another YouTube creator. He is awesome, he makes some amazing videos. Go check out his channel. He is part of the reason this video even happened, because he actually let me use his Instax Wide and SX70 for this video, so this wouldn't have happened without him. And and last but certainly not least, my good friend Sammy, she actually let me borrow the Instax Mini for this video. So this was a big group effort. Sammy is on Instagram. I will put her username on screen now because she has a couple and I don't know which one to recommend, but she's a really talented photographer and an amazing person. All right, guys, before we get on out of here, we got to do the feature of the week. And of course, the theme for this one, instant photography, didn't matter if it was Fuji or Polaroid, it was any of them. Yeah, it was very exciting stuff because there's a lot of instant and photographers on the Discord, which you can join. Link is in the description below. This week's feature goes to Kaylee IMG, IMG, I'm assuming that's for image. I like this photo a lot because it just screams summer and even the border matches it. Great color coordination. All right, guys, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe, give me a thumbs up, share this video. That would really help, especially considering I had to take out a second mortgage to pay for all this instant film. Find me on the socials, mainly Instagram and Twitter. I am not on Facebook and most importantly, I I am on MySpace. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy your week. Have a beautiful day. And remember to keep your Polaroids out of the sun. Okay, bye. Like, like and subscribe. Sweet Lou Photography. Dame. Oh my god, I almost forgot. This is not a sponsored video.